Conversion tracking is a non-negotiable for any paid media account that we manage. There has not been an account that doesn't have conversion tracking in place before we launch campaigns since as long as I can remember. And strangely enough, one of the platforms that makes it the most frustrating to set up is actually Google Ads. That is until recently. They've launched what they call their codeless conversion tracking, which isn't really codeless, but Anyway, I think things just got a lot easier for setting up conversion actions in Google Ads for people who are not quite as savvy with tag setup. So in this video, we wanna walk you through the new setup for conversion actions in Google Ads so you can start using them in your account. I'm gonna use our Paid Media Pros Google Ads account for this. And if you've been to almost any video on this channel before, you know that what that means is that there's not gonna be any performance, everything's gonna have zeros, but we're gonna use it to walk through how we need to set up these conversion actions. That also means that we don't have to blur anything out while we're walking you through how to set up these different conversion actions. I've already landed myself on the summary page for conversion management, but if you are on the campaigns tab and you're not sure how to get here, you need to go over to goals in the far left navigation, and then under conversions, you'll go to summary. Now, if you wanna use the previous version or the new codeless version, either way, you gotta start by clicking the Create Conversion Action button. I still have to choose what kind of conversions I wanna track. For the codeless version, you can use website or app. So I'm gonna use website since we do not have an app. Add in our website, click Scan. And now as we scroll down, we can see the two different types of conversion actions we can create. Now we'll skip this first one because that's gonna be the new option. Really quickly, I do want to kind of rehash the old version you still are gonna be able to create conversion actions manually, but in the past, this was the only option that we had. When we would come in to add a conversion action manually, we would then get all of these setup controls. The first option is that we get to choose which goal category we wanted this conversion action to fall under. I'm not gonna go through these in depth because we already have a video that talks about the organization of conversion actions in Google Ads. You can check that out at the top of the screen right now. But for right now, let's just click purchase. We then get to choose whether we want this to be a primary or secondary conversion action. We can give our conversion a name. You can assign a value to it. You can decide what the count is, whether you want to count every single conversion action or the first time that somebody takes that action. We can then use the click through and engaged and view through windows, as well as the attribution models and enhanced conversions all the same way. What's funny is this enhanced CPC setup down here at the bottom is moot because Google is retiring or did retire enhanced CPC. If you wanna learn more about that, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. But at this stage, we would put in all of our conversion settings and then click done. Once we did that, in this same box that we started at before, we now see conversion goal as purchase, example manual conversion, which I had to go back and rename the conversion action because I forgot to earlier. Then got the settings over here, which are all of the things that we just looked at. So nothing to do here. We would then come down and click agree and continue. And then Google would prompt us to set up the conversion code that we would need to use for this specific action. If you wanted to set this up with a Google tag directly on your website, you would just click see event snippet, take this code, add it to your website as you needed to. And then Google would start tracking those conversion actions. You would also be able to email the instructions to your webmaster. They make it very easy by providing you just an email address field. You send it right from Google Ads. Or you can use Google Tag Manager, in which Google provides you just the information you need to add to each field in the Google Tag Manager setup for a Google Ads conversion action. Then you'd have the tag be for this Google Ads conversion event. And then you could use all of the different triggers to determine when that code would fire on your site. For now, I'll just click done. We would then see that example manual conversion is set up here. We're not actually gonna use this because again, it's just an example. But now for the new conversion flow, the version that is codeless, but not codeless. Let's head up back to create conversion action, choose website, run through the same process here. And now we're gonna use this first option, create conversion actions from web and app events. I believe most accounts will probably start off with something that looks like this where there's a conversion goal that is a page view based on web, since I did add in a website and not an app URL. There's then a default event, of somebody visiting the about page on our website. And if this conversion action looks good to you, you could easily just click accept suggestion and it would automatically create all of the events that you would need for that. If this looks mostly good, but you just wanted to tweak it just a little bit, 
you can click these three dots over here, click edit suggestion, or if you're like me and you think this is a terrible suggestion for a conversion action, you can easily remove the suggestion. It'll then ask you why you wanted to do it. I'm not interested in tracking a conversion every time somebody visits our about page. That seems silly. And now even though I've declined it, as you can see at the bottom, the suggestion is still there, but that's okay. To create a new codeless conversion action, we still need to click add conversion action. You'll need to choose web or app, whichever one you want to track. And now we get something that looks a little bit like many of the other platforms that we have. We're going to start off with some of the same pieces that we saw just a little bit ago. We get to choose the conversion goal category. So again, I'll just click purchase that way they're all together. And then you'll notice that event type, you cannot change. This is a page load. If you need to track some sort of a button click or specific event other than page load, this type of conversion tracking is not going to be the right fit for you. For that, you'd need to use the manual codes, likely set something up in Google Tag Manager or some custom coding on your website. But if you're like most conversion actions that we end up working with, a page load is going to be just fine. So for now, let's go to the next field. You'll see here the URL is already pre-populated with our Paid Media Pros website because that's what I typed in earlier. But then if I click into this field, I automatically get to type at the end of this URL. So if I wanted to track any thank you page on the site, I could easily add in that language after the Paid Media Pros domain and use whatever URL syntax we're using for thank you. If you only have one thank you page on your site and it looks like this, this is pretty easy. But if you need a little bit more control over your URLs or you have multiple URLs that could work for this, now we just need to come down to see more settings. And now we're added into all of the conversion action details similar to what we were before. No matter if you accept the suggestion from Google Ads of the original page view, or if your URL is easy to use like this thank you example that I have here, I still suggest that you visit this page because this is where you can still determine if you wanna have a primary or secondary conversion action for this event. You get to determine what the value and the count of these conversions are, as well as all of the click-through and attribution windows. And then you can also change the conversion name, which is much better than purchase page load paidmediapros.com slash thank you. It's a really dumb name. Not that this one is any better, but it'll be easy to tell it apart from the manual one we did before. Okay, now the reason we came to this page. In this event section, we'll still have to rely on the page load event type, but now we can use a different match when syntax, which means that the URL is slash thank you, the URL contains slash thank you, or the URL starts with slash thank you. If I don't change anything, you'll notice that the default is going to be URL starts with. And on the previous page, you don't know that. It just has you put in the URL information. So again, another reason to visit this page is that if you need to use any sort of different URL language or syntax, you need to have that done on this page, and not the previous page. And the last thing I wanna call out with this is that you'll notice there's no additional functions in this event box. You cannot say URL contains this, but not this. You can't say URL contains this language and this language, and you can't say URL contains this language or this language. There's no additional controls for and statements or statements or exclusions. So whatever you're doing in this event field with your URL rules, make sure that it counts only the page loads that you want it to and does not include any of the page loads you don't. Since we're not using this event for anything, I'm gonna go ahead and just click done and assume that this is what I want it to be. We'll then do what we did earlier, click save and continue. And unlike the last one, we're all done. When you click finish, you'll be taken to the conversion summary and everything is already done. Since there's no additional code that you need on your site other than the original Google tag, there's nothing for you to add at this stage, nothing for you to email a developer or for you to add to Google Tag Manager. Let's click finish. And now you can see our two conversion actions that we just made. They show up the same way, we just set them up differently. Overall, I really like that Google is launching this new, quote, codeless version of conversion tracking. It's gonna make things much easier when I'm trying to set up new events for clients that aren't as savvy and can't do it themselves and aren't interested in having us have access to their Google Tag Manager account or the back end of their website. All we'll have to do is find some sort of URL syntax that makes sense. We can set everything up directly in the Google Ads interface. The only limitation here, in my opinion, is going to be the controls that you have over that URL. 
Remember, you have to have only one field, and it can be either URL is, URL contains, or URL starts with. There are no additional controls there, so make sure that whatever you're setting up as your URL is easily filtered and isn't going to be used for any other purpose. If you have any additional questions about Google Ads codeless conversion tracking or any other conversion tracking setup piece in the Google Ads interface, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.